Today I'm going to talk a little bit more about blocks and show you how they can be used in real code. One place where blocks are essential are in the COCO class methods that take blocks as function arguments. Today we'll look at UI views animate with duration method which takes a block and then animates it over time. Uh, this is going to be a real world demo so if you're following along in Xcode at home and I hope you are. The first step will be to find a cute cat picture on the internet and copy it to your desktop. These cute cat pictures are pretty easy to find. I don't think you'll have any trouble digging one up. So once we have that ready, let's go ahead and create a brand new Xcode project. This is going to be an iOS application, a single view application, you can call it whatever you want, and we'll use storyboards and reference counting, automatic reference counting for this. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get this cat into our project. This is done simply by dragging the feline into the project and copying that item into our destinations group folder. And if we look at our main storyboard, let's get that cat image onto the screen as quickly as possible. So this we will we'll be looking for an image view. Let's drag that into our UI view and have that just take over the whole thing. Once that's done, we should be able to select our image up here. There's our cat. If it doesn't show up in here, click it again or just type in whatever you named the cat. Hello, kitty. And then we're going to have a button that we're going to click that will basically fade the cat in and out from 100% from opaque to uh, completely transparent or change the alpha from 1 to 0. Let's do that on a button click. So here we're going to find us a button. Throw the button up in the air at the top. Let's make this nice and big and we'll change the text to something that makes sense like fade. Okay, now let's hook up these UI elements to our view controller's header file. And the easiest way to do that is by option clicking the view controller.h file and that brings up this nice split view so that we can easily control drag from the kitten pick up into the interface and we'll create an outlet for that. We'll call that cat. Then we'll take our button and we'll make an action by control dragging that into our header file and we'll change the connection type to action and we'll call this fade. Okay, so we're done with the header file. Let's move into the implementation file. ViewController.m. You'll see that interface builder created our nice little fade method here. But one thing that we're going to need for this to fade in and out, we're going to need a, an instance variable and it's going to be a float value and let's call this the cat fade float fade float value and we'll give it an initial value Oh no, we can't do that. Uh, in the view did load, we'll give it an initial value of one. Okay, when we click the button, we want the cat fade to be either zero or one. So we're going to be toggling this on and off here. Let's do that by setting cat fade to if cat fade is equal to 1, then we will set that to 0, otherwise we'll just set it back to 1. So just toggling that value. And now this part should be a little bit of a refresher if you have taken a look at the my other screencasts. If not, you can go back and check those out. Uh, this is how we create a block. We would give it a return type. In this case, ours is going to be void. We have this funny syntax where we start with the parentheses, we give it a caret, and we'll give it a method name that we are just making up here. Uh, and followed by any argument types in here, ours is just going to be void. 
and now let's define the body of this function. And our, it starts again with the caret, with any argument types, which in our case again is void. And then we're going to see the body here. What we want to do is we want to take our cat images alpha value and set it to our cat fade value, which again is going to be just toggling on and off from 0 to 1. Okay, let's end this. Remember that these that these block functions have to be terminated with a semicolon. And now let's actually call our fade cat block that we just defined. And here we'll run it. And we actually want to run this on the simulator. There's the kitty. Let's click fade. And it immediately turns white. And then it immediately turns completely opaque once again. So let's fix that. We want it to fade in and out nicely. So instead of calling the fade cat block here, let's use the UI views class method to help us. It's the name of the method is something like an uh, mate with duration. So here we're going to send we're going to make this transition from from the cat's alpha go from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0 over a duration. So let's make this duration say 2 seconds and here we'll give it the block. Well you see here it, it wants a, a block definition so we'll tab over to that hit return and it's giving us this anonymous block syntax. We'll tell you about that in a second. But basically it wants us to call a block in here. So let's call our fade cat method block method here. And then run that and see how that goes. Oops, this needs to be terminated with a semicolon. Run. Now we have the same kitty, but this time he's going to fade out nicely. So the difference here is we're using UI views animate with duration class method to anim to make that transition go from one to make to make this transition go from zero to one or from one to zero over a time period of two seconds. Yeah, I could I could pretty much do this all day. Well, uh, one thing I should also mention is that we would usually call this as an an, an anonymous block method. This is, this is just really asking for a literal block syntax declaration. In other words, in here, we don't really need to define a formal name for this block and, and call it like that. We could actually just take the body of this guy and inside of this, or just take the body rather, copy that, and and use it just like that. So we don't really need to, to define the whole name and, and declare it like that in a, in a separate place. We could just we could just call it like like this right right in line with this literal block syntax. This is known as an anonymous function, something that if you write a lot of JavaScript or some other similar languages, you've probably seen stuff like this before, sans the weird syntax. Let's run this and make sure that this works the exact same way. And cat is still getting faded, which is great. So I hope this helps you understand how blocks can be used in real world situations. Next time I'll go over a little bit more about blocks. I'll try to touch on some more advanced topics such as variable scope and stuff like that.